Hi Year 12, it's Mrs V and today we are going to talk about the electrolysis of aqueous solutions. Now aqueous solutions just means anything that's dissolved in water. When I was just a young chemistry student at school, my teacher used to come into every class carrying a bottle of something dissolved in water and he used to say, what's in the solution? So he'd come in with a bottle of copper sulfate and say, what's in the solution? We would have to say copper ions, sulfate ions and water molecules. So he was trying to get us to talk about always that there were ions and water molecules in our solution. So let's try it now. What's in a solution of sodium chloride? That's right, sodium ions, chloride ions, and water molecules. That's one of the essential skills you're going to need for this particular topic. Can I give you a really tricky one? What is in a bottle of hydrochloric acid? There are hydrogen ions or hydronium ions, chloride ions, and water molecules. All right, let's flip to the whiteboard and get started. Okay, so we are looking at your chemistry booklet. We are looking at page 25 and we're looking at electrolysis of salts in aqueous solution. Pause the video and I'm just going to turn myself off here. There we go, that's better. Now we can just see the whiteboard without my shining face in front of the fireworks. So electrolysis of salts in aqueous solution. When we did our last lesson and we talked about the electrolysis of molten salts, we looked at the fact that the anions went to the anode and they got oxidized and the cations went to the cathode where they got reduced. But in this particular example of aqueous solutions, it's not just anions and cations in the solution. So there are three things at the anode that could be oxidized. So we can have the anode itself, if it was an active metal. So if we have an active anode, so that's any metal, probably not something as unreactive as gold or platinum, but gold would still work. We have the anions just like we saw in our molten salts, the anions can go to the anode and get oxidized. But do you remember when we learned about polar molecules last year and we learned about water molecules and water molecules, remember they were a V-shaped molecule, there were non-bonded electron pairs and because of the difference in electronegativity, we had partial charges, the delta minus and the delta plus. So that's a polar molecule. Which means that if we have charged electrodes, the negative end of the water molecule is going to be attracted to the positive electrode and the positive end of the water molecule is going to be attracted to the negative electrode. So the water molecules themselves are going to actually move toward the anode. And at this point, I want you to turn back to your electrochemical series because we've got water being able to act as both an oxidant and a reductant. And I want you to highlight the equations. So here is water acting as a reductant. So highlight that equation on your electrochemical series. You can pause the video if you're still trying to find it. And then right down the bottom, we have water acting as an oxidant. And I want you to highlight that equation so that in your electrochemical series, you know where the water equations are. 
Now, just be really careful. Don't do this one. Don't do this one here. Okay, that one is a hydrogen peroxide acting as an oxidant. So don't do that one. All right, so when you've got those two equations highlighted, come back to page 25 and we will look at how we work out what happens at the anode. So we know that if we've got an active metal, the anode itself could end up being oxidized. The anions could be, end up being oxidized or the water molecules. So which one is going to get oxidized? Well, to, they will all be oxidized to some extent, but the one that's going to get oxidized the most is going to be whichever one is the best reductant. Okay, so the best reductant is going to be the one that gets oxidized and becomes the major product. The others are going to be oxidized as well, but they're going to be very minor products. Okay, and this is really important in industry because in industry, your major product is the one that you're producing to sell. So any minor products that are being formed are just wasting your electricity and for no profit. So it's really, really important that we can set an electro, uh, electrolytic cell up in such a way that we get mostly the product we want and not much of the minor products. Okay, let's move across to the cathode. So at the cathode, the nice thing about the cathode is you don't need to worry about the cathode itself taking part. The cathode always acts just as a conductor. It doesn't ever take part in the reaction. So there's only two things that you need to worry about. So the cations, now be careful, could be more than one type. If you've got an acidified solution, for instance, if you had some acidified copper sulfate, then you've got cations of copper ions and hydrogen ions. So more than one type is quite possible in this case. And of course, we also have our water molecules. So which one's going to be reduced? Well, the best oxidant is going to be reduced and that's going to be your major product. So your best oxidant is going to give you your major product. And of course, everything else in there is also going to get reduced, but it's going to be a much lesser extent. Okay, but you're still going to get these minor products. All right, so we do, we're going to do a prac and I'll put the video up for that as soon as it's edited, where we look at the effect of concentration of an ion in solution. Okay, we're looking at changing the rates of reaction according to the concentration of ions and sometimes we can get different products than the ones we predict because of different concentrations but I'll talk more about that when we do the prac. One thing we need to really think about though is that some ions don't get oxidized and you need to know these things like nitrate, the ones I'll expect you to know are nitrate and sulfate. Okay, and they can't be oxidized because of nitrogen here, if you look at in the nitrate ion, okay, the oxidation number of nitrogen is what? So we've got negative six here and we have to add up to negative one. So that must be po positive five. Nitrogen doesn't go any higher than positive five. So this is the highest that nitrogen goes. And similarly with the sulfate ion, the oxidation number of sulfur in this one is plus six. And that is the highest that sulfur goes. So if you've got those anions in solution, they're never going to be oxidized because you don't get any higher than that. So let's have a look at a bit of an example here. So over here, first example in your book, determine the major reactions. So we're not going to worry about the minor reactions here. We're just going to do the major reactions that are occurring for the electrolysis of copper two sulfate solution with graphite electrodes. So we're going to do our cell analysis. 
again, I'm just going to draw my electrodes. This is going to be my positive. This is going to be my negative. Then I'm going to write down all of these species that are in the solution. So this is where my teacher's question comes in of what's in a copper two sulfate solution. Well, there are copper two ions, Cu2 plus. There are sulfate ions, SO4 double minus. And because it's a solution, there are water molecules. Now we need to know which way they're going to go. Well, the copper ions are positive, so they're going to get attracted to the negative electrode. The sulfate ions are negative, so they're going to get attracted to the positive electrode. The water has a positive and a negative end, so you're going to get some water molecules attracted to the negative and others attracted to the positive. So water goes both ways. Let's look at what is in the competition. At the positive electrode, is that the anode or the cathode? That's right, anode. This is an electrolytic cell. So for the anode, we are looking at the reductance because oxidation occurs at the anode. So that means the things that go over to the anode are reductance. Over here, we've got the cathode. And the things that go to the cathode are the oxidants. because okay, reduction happens at the cathode and oxidants get reduced. So what is in the competition over at the anode? Well, the sulfate ions have gone there. And so have the water molecules. So let's go to our electrochemical series and have a look. So we're looking for the reductance. Okay, the reductance getting oxidized. So we're on this side of the table. So this is the reductance side. So we can find our water here. We can find our water. And we won't find the sulfate ion because the sulfate ion is one of those where it never gets oxidized. So when we come over to our cell analysis here, we know that this does not, never gets oxidized. And that means water is the winner. So it's the winner. And so we're going to actually get the equation where water is oxidized. And when water is oxidized, we get oxygen. So we get two waters and four H pluses and four E minuses. So that's the major reaction that happens at the anode. Okay, across to the cathode. Who's in the competition? The competition is copper ions and water molecules. So copper ions versus water here. So let's go to our electrochemical series. Remember, at the cathode, we're looking at the oxidants now. So we're looking at the oxidant side Try the green pen. Oh, what am I doing? So there's the oxidant side. Let's find our water. Not this equation up the top. That's oxygen being an oxidant. Let's go and find water being an oxidant. And what else do we have in the mix? We have, here we had copper ions in the mix as well. So we had copper ions versus the water molecules. So let's find the copper ions on the reductance side. Here they are. So which one's going to win? The stronger oxidant. 
And on the oxidant side, you'll notice that they get stronger as they go up. So this is stronger and this is weaker. So copper ions are going to win this one. Which means that our reaction is going to be at the cathode is reduction, so it's gain of electrons. So that's going to be what we see. Now, what are we going to notice here? So this is going to be, we're going to see a coating of copper forming on the cathode. And what are we going to see over here? We're going to see some bubbles of oxygen gas. And we are going to see the pH, the concentration of hydrogen ions. Oh, what is it doing? Concentration of hydrogen ions increases. Therefore, the pH decreases. So that's what we're actually going to observe happening. We're going to see some bubbles of oxygen gas. And if we test the um, pH of the solution, we'll notice that the pH of the solution will be less than seven here because we started with water. All right, your turn. I want you to pause the video now and I want you to see if you can work out the major reactions occurring at the anode and cathode for the electrolysis of copper two sulfate solution, but this time with copper electrodes. So I'm going to draw your cell and I want you to do your analysis. Okay, so have you had a go? If you didn't have a go, stop the video and actually have a go. This is, you have to be active in your learning, even when you're at home. Okay, let's have a look at what's in this solution. So copper two sulfate solution, copper ions, sulfate ions, and water molecules. But we have copper electrodes. So we've got copper here as well. When you've got active anodes, you have to include those. All right, what's going to happen? Well, copper ions are going to go towards the negative electrode because they're positive. Sulfate is going to go to the positive because it's a negative ion and water is going to go both ways. All right, so let's look at our competitors at each of the electrodes, starting over here at the anode. We have sulfate ions, sulfate ions and water molecules have come across, but we also have copper. So we have copper versus sulfate versus water. So now we have to go over to our electrochemical series again and see which one of those is going to win. So I'm going to rub out what we did last time and we will try again. So we have, we are looking at the reductant side. Okay, so we're looking at the reductant side here and we have water competing. We have copper, the electrode competing. And we can't find the sulfate ion. Because of course the sulfate ion never gets oxidized. So the competition becomes water here versus copper. On the reductant side, we get stronger as we go down and therefore copper here is going to be our winner. So copper is our winner. And that means our reaction is going to be copper getting oxidized to copper ions and two electrons. All right, across to the 
cathode now. So our cathode here, remember we are looking now at reduction, so we're looking at oxidants getting reduced. Remember, the material of the cathode never takes part. So what we have here is a competition between copper ions. That's the worst copper ion symbol that I've ever drawn. She's saying something. Copper ions and water molecules. And we did, if you look back to our last example, we did that and we found out that copper ions we're going to be the winner there. So we're going to end up with Cu2 plus, plus 2e minus goes to Cu. And so the only thing that's actually occurring is the copper from the anode is going into solution and the copper ions are coming out as copper at the cathode. So here, what are we going to see happen? We're going to see the cathode Oh, sorry, the anode over here, isn't it? The anode will corrode. Or you might want to say the anode will lose mass. Over on the other side, what we're going to see is that the cathode will gain mass. So we're going to get copper plated onto the cathode. This is actually how you can electroplate something by making it the cathode. And if we were at school, we would actually do that and you could all electroplate coins with copper. Um, copper plated on cathode, that's what we were doing. All right, we don't see, because there are no hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions involved here, nothing's gonna happen to the pH. Okay, one more for you to do. Sodium iodide solution with graphite electrodes. Now these are inert electrodes. So they won't react. It's always nice to have inert electrodes because you don't have to worry about them. Okay, so one more example. Let's do the analysis. What do we have in sodium iodide solution? I can still hear my chemistry teacher's voice from when I was a year 11 student going, what is in the solution? And he was actually the principal of our school and we were all very scared of him. So we were desperately afraid that he would ask us to answer the question. So what's in sodium iodide solution? We have sodium ions. We have iodide ions. And being a solution, we have water molecules. The electrodes we don't need to worry about because they are inert, they will not react. All right, pause the video, have a go at the example. See if you can work it out. I mean it, pause the video, have a go. All right, hopefully you've had a go now. Let's go through the solution to this one. <laughs> no pun intended, but geez, I'm a natural. So, sodium ions, positive, will go to the negative electrode. Iodide ions, negative, will go to the positive electrode. Water has a negative end and a positive end, so we're going to have it going both ways. Who are the competitors at the anode? We have iodide ions versus water molecules. Over to the electrochemical series, and we're going to rub out our last effort. Oh, that won't rub out, oh well. Copper selected forever, what do you know? All right. We are at the anode, so we're on the reductant side, so we want to find iodide ions, there they are. And we want to find water molecules. So because we have an inert anode, that's all that's competing. Remember, 
the increasing strength of reductance goes this way, which means that this one, our iodide ion is the winner. So we are in, going to oxidize the iodide ion and that's going to go to iodine. What will you see? This is sort of a pale yellow solution. And this is a brown, this is brown in water. If you were actually studying this reaction, you'd probably use some starch to indicate it. But we're not worrying about that today. All right, at the cathode, what do we have? We have sodium ions and we have water molecules across to the electrochemical series. We're over because we are reduct, we're looking at the um, oxidants now because we're looking at the cathode. Let's find our sodium ions. Whoa, all the way down there. Sodium ions here water molecules. Who wins? Remember on this side, strength goes up. So this here, the water molecule is our winner. So we're going to end up with water being the winner here. And we'll have the reduction of water. Um, that goes to uh, what do we have? 2OH minus. Um, or is it 4OH minus? Where's my equation? Here it is. 2OH minus, yes, and hydrogen gas. What are we going to observe here? These hydroxide ions, we're going to have an increasing concentration of OH minus. Therefore the pH is going to increase and we are going to see here some bubbles of hydrogen gas. Okay it's time for you guys to have a go at the worksheet now and I will see you in the next lesson.